Hey guys. Hey. Uh, this is Dodge and Fusky. Uh, tutorial number nine. We actually checked this time, so we knew which number it was. Uh, okay, right. Today, uh, what we're going to be doing, due to a very popular demand, uh, is we're going to try and do an episode on mix down tips. Now, lots of people say do a mix down tutorial. Now, it's really, really hard, as we've explained many, many times, to do a tutorial on mix downs because every mix is different, yeah. and you can't just say I'll oh, put the kick at minus three decibels because that's totally depends on what the other sounds like. You really have to use your ears. It's not a kind of mathematical science doing a mix down. It's all about what sounds right. So you need to know your speakers. It's really, really important. Yeah. Before we even get started on doing the let's give it I think we should run for a few tips on how to get the best out of a mix down. Yeah. Which is what's really important is to know what you're mixing down on. Now lots of people go, oh well, you know, actually I find the Adam A sevens are better than the A fives because whatever, I don't know, lots of people go on about it and you'll see lots of people that can't really make music talking shit on forums about yeah. how certain monitors do this uh, right. Before we go any further don't get me wrong, I like having good monitors, we love our, our Mackies and the Adams that we used bits, but uh, just to give you a good example of, of why you don't necessarily need them and what's more important to, is to know your speakers is uh, Cohen Sound, Will from Cohen Sound uses £15 headphones that he's had since he was a kid to make tunes on. Yeah. Okay, so any, the point any, being that he's had them for so long that he knows, he knows them really out, well. He knows, how, he knows what things sound like on them. So. Yeah, exactly. And if you listen to his mix downs, they're fucking wicked. And he hasn't used £2,000 worth of monitors in an acoustically treated room at all. He uses Absolutely. a shitty old computer with cheap headphones. Okay, so you don't necessarily need them, but it does help. Yeah. Okay, so don't take that as, oh, Dodge and Fusky say that the studio monitors are not important because that's not yeah. what we're trying to say. We're just trying it's to say it's more own. important to know your speakers. Yeah, know, okay. know your tools well, I think. Definitely. I mean, I've, I've had these uh, Mackies for about eight years, so I know them so well. Yeah. Um, okay, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a few tips and we're going to reference what we're saying to a project. Now, we've chosen Guetta Step again, which is the first thing we did a uh, tutorial on, just because it's pretty simple in terms of the mix down. A lot of the more recent tunes we do have upwards of 150 channels and we wouldn't even be able to get a quarter away through and we'd spend half the tutorial trying to work out what the channels were, which would just look stupid. Um, yeah. So I guess the first, first thing we're going to start on is uh, well, we'd start making tunes with drums. Now obviously we've already done tutorials on drums and synths and people say do a mix down tutorial and what we've always been saying is look we already cover mix and tips as we go along. Yeah. So we're a lot, some of this may be repeated because that's inevitable. Yeah I think the thing being is like every, every track is mixed for the other tracks so in essence a mix down is, is not like the overall thing it's how every individual track plays off each other so like we said, we've kind of gone over it, but we'll, we'll try and generalise a bit more and give you a sense of like what works well with like certain elements, how they balance together. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's mainly a question of balance, okay? So if you think of, of, of music these days, the idea is to fill up the whole frequency spectrum. That's generally what sounds kind of inverted commas right today, okay? So everything's about making everything loud and full. Um, so what you really have to understand is about how f you have low frequencies, I'm sort of doing this from reverse with my right hand because it'll be flipped, yeah, uh, up to the high frequencies, okay, you can, and so the low frequencies obviously is sub bass at the very top of the hearing range, you'll have like a hi-hat or like white noise, like a tss pad, okay, now the idea is to fill it all out without over encumbering things, so the reason when people say, oh, you know, I've, I've boosted the sub on my kick and notched a bit of the middle out, not necessarily because, oh, I like a kick with a notch missing in the middle, but sometimes you've got to leave space, okay, so generally to give you a quick rundown of how, where, where everything should be, at the very bottom you're going to have sub, mm. Cosimo sub, then upwards from there you get like the punch of a kick drum, around about 100 hertz. Now we haven't got time to explain what hertz on this means, just do a bit of research on Wikipedia. And then you've got like sort of a snare drum around 200 and then you're, like kind of your main bass noise is filling them between there and about sort of 2k, something like that. And then above that you'll have the high parts of your drums, like your hi-hats, your cymbals, your crashes and all your white noise. Yeah. Uh, generally, the higher up you go, the wider you want it to be. So things like kind of noises will generally always high pass fill them, take any bass out, and spread it really yeah, wide. I always think of it as an upside down pyramid or triangle. So it's kind of it goes up like that. Yeah. Um, obviously, more sort of like that, I would say. But yeah, it's um yeah, it's it's, it's the high sounds that give you that. That's what the, the high sounds of what the stereo impression is, and then the low sounds you just want to be solid in the middle. And I'm sure we've said this before as well, but. It's always good yeah. to go over it again. Definitely. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, um, obviously we've been over how we've mixed drums down before. Go back to tutorial number one if you haven't seen it already, uh, of this particular tune. And what we're going to do is we're going to show how things work in relation to each other. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo the kick drum just on its own, and I'm going to solo the main bass lead. So you can hear how they kind of, they're mixed in relation to each other. So... And I think the thing to notice in this is how you can hear both elements equally as clearly, yeah. whilst they're both quite loud as well. So I mean, the whole point of, of, of 
how you mix stuff down. It's just so you can hear everything. Yeah. So people go, oh, I don't know how you mix down, how are you meant to mix down? If you can't hear your kick, turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. You want to make sure you can hear everything. Okay. So here's the kick on its own. And here are the, uh, the this is the main drop bass noise. Uh, it's an old tune, okay, so it's not our, our best engineering, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's easy to explain. So. Okay, so I'm going to play that, the kick and that together. So you see how you can still hear everything, kind of, you can hear the kick and you can hear the bass noises. Yeah. Um, and that, that is a general rule of thumb that applies to every element successive on top of that then would be that, like you said, when you're mixing down, I mean this is what Dodge is particularly good at, but you just want every element there and so you can hear them and, and uh, you can recognise them. Obviously some things are quieter and louder and you want things to be more noticeable than other stuff, but you know, particularly with drums and bass, which is the main part of a dubstep tune, you want them all to be there and clear. Yeah, it's it, dubstep, you're lucky. If you want to make dubstep, it's one of the easiest things you can mix down in terms of like full on electronic music. Obviously, certain things like hip hop are even easier, but um, drum, like, if you, drum and bass is the hardest in my personal experience yeah, because it's so, so fast, there's so little space between the elements, it's so busy, and like your drums take up a lot of mid range compared to dubstep where you basically got punchy kick, punchy snare, low down, and then like your high end fizzy kind of clap sounds and your thing, and there's loads of space in between. Yeah. So, it's really important to kind of visualize this frequency spectrum, okay, so from like low right the way up to high, and say for example you've got a kick and you decide oh, I'm going to boost that at 200 hertz, you have to understand why, don't just do it because you read it on a forum, okay, when you boost something around 200 hertz, if you listen to it, you'll be able to hear that it goes, it's got like a kind of smack to it, yeah. and it just sounds kind of right, if you know what I mean, yeah. but when you do that, don't start boosting your bass noises around 200 hertz as well, because what you'll then find is you've got two things competing for the same kind of spectrum and it's a bit like I was saying before in another tutorial when you've got somebody talking to you you can hear what they're saying but if you have lots of people talking in a room it just sounds like noise and that's because everybody's talking most people's speech is around about the same kind of pitch and frequency so because there's lots of stuff trying to compete for the same space you can't make any of the elements out and then your mix downs will just sound like a mess you won't be able yeah. to pick them out and even though your snare sounded fine when it was solo suddenly when it's playing you can't hear yeah. it properly it's because it's so clashing. It's like it's, that's it, it's, it's balancing stuff so using the kind of the, the boosting frequency and notching frequencies theory like obviously certain things occupy those same frequency domains so you want to be taking with a snare is a good example like if it's punching around 200 hertz then if there's say a bass element or even on some subs you might just want to notch not loads but notch out so it gives it the snare the room to breathe because that's yeah with the dubstep that's an important thing with with having your kicks and snares being nice and punchy so yeah, yeah. No, definitely man um, right, next thing I'm going to show you is the snare, exactly, so what we're, we're going to break this down again, we already did it into tutorial number one, but just to go over it very, very quickly again, that's the snacky element of the snare, and what we've got here uh, is we've boosted it here at 200 hertz, so you can see on the spec analyzer it's kind of peaking there, uh, and then we've got a clappy noise, and there's a few yeah, actually, yeah. but this, this is the principal one, which sounds like that, now we've got a filter on that, which is making it make that kind of noise. Now if I turn the filter off, it's got a lot more weight to it. There's a lot more weight to it and it'll kind of clash with the other snare and it'll just sound muddy because like you might, it's a bit like, if they're not exactly kind of, kind of agreeing with each other when they're, when they're hitting them low down, it will sound like about, it's a bit like hitting two keys in the piano next to each other where it just sounds muddy and sounds shit. Yeah. Um, so that's the reason we filter out, high pass it or you can EQ out the low end, that, so it's occupying a totally different frequency area from the punchy snare. So together, you've got a nice rounded kind of smacky punchy snare. Yeah. That, it's, it's just making sure things don't clash. You should, um, it's then their do, do the kick drums and the snares and the bass now, because then yeah. that'll be with nothing else, and that'll be a good example of how they all maintain their yeah. own clarity. So we've got the main bass noise here, including the sub, um, and uh, I'm going to play them with just the kick and the snare. <laughs> You can kind of hear everything's with its own space, and you can kind of hear it. So, no, we've got the sub, which you were, if I solo, there's no point, but trust me, there's a sub on one of those channels. We've got three different bass noises. Don't worry about that. You don't have to do that. That's just how we've done it on this tune. Um, but every tune's different. A lot of the time now, we're, we've me and Chris have got a lot better at making really fat noises just using one synth. Yeah, so we used to often. layer quite often. I'm still used to some on sometimes, but yeah, it's. Um, but and with those, I mean, they're they're all going to be EQ'd individually. So you've got the sub occupying the bottom end, and then with these. Um, other ones, they're going to be layered 
in a way that they're not clashing with each other either. So yeah. if you had the sub and then you had one of those other bass noises that had some low end stuff in, that's just going to be EQ'd out nice and simple. Yeah, so basically off, it's generally best to roll off kind of smoothly below 200 hertz on your bass noises that aren't actually the sub. Now, it's important to understand the differentiation and what we mean between bass noises and actual bass. Yeah. So bass as in sub bass as in what you kind of feel like yeah. in a club, what's like bassy. That will generally just be a sine wave. So what's best to do is create a new instrument, just massive, uh, Nexus, uh, Zeta, anything. Just get a sine wave, maybe get another sine wave, an octave above it, turned down a little bit just to get a bit more kind of body, more, more body yeah. into it. And um, just just program it to be the same as all your bass noises. Most most of you will know this, isn't it? but this isn't something that people generally get too wrong. But then making sure that your noise is above it. Now, one thing... Um, I, I know it's with a lot of demos we get sent is they kind of feel a bit dry and a bit empty now it's really important to kind of strike the right balance with filling out your tune uh, to, kind of make, to making it sound full without making it sound too messy now again Guerra Step isn't the best example of this because it's quite an old tune but the kind of principle is still there um, so noises like this are really good Filling it out. And I mean, in, in context of this tune, it's quite a subtle effect. And I think when you when you hear the drop of this tune, as most of such tunes, you wouldn't. That's yeah. you're not going to notice that sound. That's not going to be the noise that you're going to hear and go, "Oh right, you're yeah, going to hear the bass." I mean, that's what you're. Yeah, you you're barely even notice it's for. there, but you'll but find if you mute it, it suddenly sounds really dry, dry and, and a bit it. of shit. And with a noise like that, that's quite a, a, a white noisy style thing um, with a bit of a frequency on it. And we use it, it's all They're over. They're just vengeance music. sweeps, there's yeah. so many of them. Just and go through vengeance and effects bars. You can see it goes uh, for a couple of few bars there. Um, and that's just, it's it's giving it that kind of, there's going to be a certain element of frequencies where it just needs that filling out. And although it's not a particularly great sound or whatever, but it's just going to make it sound overall fuller. But yeah. not to be overused and not to be used too loudly because then it becomes too abrasive, I guess. So. Yeah, definitely. And and really important, all these kind of stuff, don't forget the key about making stuff not clash. As you can see here, we've EQ'd it quite aggressively, and you can see there's like very yeah. little below kind of below really, which over like 1k. Yeah, and, and that's and interesting. I mean, that's when we were saying about the bass noises, and obviously the bass noises in this tune are, are going to have quite a lot of high frequency content, but around where it's dipped is around where the main meat of the bass noises are going to be. There, yeah, it? so, so it's like yeah. filling the space between the bass noises and your ticky ticky hi hats. It's just so it feels nice and full. Yeah. And what I quite often do is have a noise like that running constantly for the whole, uh, the whole time the main drops there, as in the yeah. main bulk of when it has dropped until it goes back to the next breakdown. Yeah. And yeah. quite often a trick I'll do is I'll get like a noise, and I'll have it for like eight bars or four bars or something like that, and then I'll reverse it yeah. and have it go not so it just goes. Yeah. Until it goes to the beginning of the next phrase, and, goes, again. and another so effect of that in. is it, yeah, it adds the flow, and that's an important thing with these up, up and down sweeps. It's, is it's, it's giving it the movement yeah. without actually, yeah, it not being a main element of the track, but it gives it sort of a movement, which I think is quite a kind of intrinsic thing with dance music. You need it to flow and keep the energy going up and down constantly, so yeah, yeah. it's a good trick for that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and there's, there's other really good tricks because we're running out of time. Things we can we can tell you. I mean, obviously, just like that's the key thing is making sure things don't clash. Okay, so just practice yeah. that. Side chain is really good as well. Uh, there's different. We won't show you because it's different for how you do it on different programs. But the key with side chain, there's two two types. You can have like side chain compression where there's quite a slow release. You go like the Eric Prids call on me style effect, which is like more of an effect. Or you can have a very fast release, which is which is really good if you want to make a kick drum or a snare kick through and they're quite clashy and you still you've done everything we said about you know making sure sure you don't overlap too much but you, it's still you can't hear it yeah. so if you side chain all your bass noises and all that kind of stuff and all any whooshing noises off the kick or the snare just as a very very quick yeah. dip it's again just, we so haven't got time to explain to side yeah. chain compression but there are thousands of yeah, yeah. To your side chain and another and on side chain I mean a simple simple trick for doing exactly the same thing is if there's an element that you want to have that side chain affected, you just do a tiny little volume automation and for the same amount of time. So with the kick or a snare, with the basses, you can have them all in central group and just have the volume ducking at every yeah. quarter bar automate or whatever. the volume. Again, that, that's, bring it's up, same, bring up yeah. sound again, that's how they do all their, their side chain stuff. It's generally not really side chain at all, it's just automation yeah. is drawn. So it's, it's, it's the same way of doing it, like, it's a different yeah. way of doing the same effect. It's basically. manually drawing in side chain. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's yeah. pretty much all we've got time for. Um, give us some feedback. Like, like we said from the beginning, the reason we 
haven't done a mixed down tutorial until now is because it's very hard to really do. Yeah. I mean, all you we might have seen, kind of we just kind of gone over stuff we've already said. But yeah, if, 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 if I guess if, if there's something what you specifically want answered, remember we quite often do Q and A's. Um, so come on and uh, on the Facebook page and keep yeah. your eye out for that. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. Do send us your comments on Twitter, and uh, we'll see you next month.